activated your window into how we can change the way in which we aspire for persons with disabilities, how we change our expectations from seeing inability to expecting ability. Activated takes us on a journey of taking lessons from persons with disabilities in how we must do things differently to unleash the contributions persons with disabilities can and must make to building a disability inclusive Mzanzi. Hello and welcome to Activated with me, your host, Taryn Tomlinson. In today's episode, we celebrate the womanhood of mothers of children with disabilities. It's often said that most successful adults born with a disability had parents or primary caregivers who believed in them regardless of the type or severity of disability. And although we say parents, the reality is that more than 90% of children born with a disability are brought up by single mothers. When looking to support mothers and families of children with disabilities, it's important that we see the mothers as women first, courageous, resilient, supportive, and then look at how we can support their mental, emotional and economic well-being so that they too can become the best versions of themselves. The time has come to celebrate the womanhood of mothers of children with disabilities. Mothers, it's time to get your womanhood activated. In today's show, we meet Kim Rundle from the Bread Need Cafe, who shares with us the typical challenges a mom of a child with a disability faces, even when they have stable economic backgrounds and how they overcome such. We visit Shona MacDonald, leader of the social enterprise movement in South Africa, reinventing herself and her business continuously to expand its impact and footprint. In particular, how power is being handed back to mothers of children with disabilities as change agents in their communities. Our guest in studio this week is Martha Miller, COO of Sawood, who has come to talk to us about the importance of support for mothers of children with disabilities. Dit ver geweldige toewijding, kracht en medeleie om dier die dagelijkste strijd te wortel. Kim Randel is een kunstenaar, zakenvrouw en moeder wat haar reis van vrou wees en moederskap met ons deel. Ons het een draai bij haar gaan maak. Kim Rundle's daughter has autism, is semi-verbal and dyslexic, but no need to pittle the Rundle family. Instead, Kim has tackled the differences in her daughter head-on and decided with two other moms to open a cafe. Kim knew that the world wouldn't accept Sammy completely. Rather than resign to that, she decided to create a world that would. I'm Kim Rundle. I knew very early on that Sammy well, she didn't have the normal milestones. And as a remedial teacher, I was very aware of it. Raising a special needs person, how does it enhance my womanhood? It's given me complex post-traumatic stress disorder. That's what it's given me. You are forever anxious. When you've got a child with a disability, everybody disappears. And you are isolated, you are lonely, you start getting depressed. You are so overwhelmed because you are alone. These children imprint on one parent, and it is normally the mother. So the father, it's jealous. He's like, you're not spending enough time with me. You're being judged all the time. You're too hard, you're too soft. There's an issue around being a mother of a, of a child with a disability. Your own family is gonna judge you. And sometimes you need to walk away from those two. And it was here in the coffee shop environment that, that Sammy met her best friend, Michaela, you know, and her sidekick. And where she, building of this, she met Emil, her boyfriend. You know, so you're spurring your child on to become, to, to get out into society and live the best life. Now we need living space for our neurodiverse young adults because they're going to want to be independent. And we're not going to be here for the rest of our lives. We are going to die. What's going to happen when we are gone? So my next aspiration after the coffee shop is to, I want a living village. Let me just say that South African women are exceptionally strong. 
and resilient. But they're not unbreakable. We break. And having a special needs child, for sure, you're gonna break. And as far as the women's movement in South Africa, they're not really doing anything to empower us. Women can't be empowered if they stand alone. Women empowerment societies, whatever, come and find us, we need you. Moeders van kinders met gestreemdhede moet groot uitdagings in die gezicht staar en baie opofferings om hulle kinders groot te maak. Martha Miller, die hoofdbedrijfsbeamte van Sawood, een platform vir die dialoog vir vrouwe, gesels vandag met ons in die atelier en vertel hoe belangrijk dit is om die balans van vrouwees en moederskap te behou, terwyl jy met die kind met die gestreemdheid groot maak. Ons is nou weer terug na hier die advertentiebreek. Welcome back. Martha Miller believes that the women of South Africa stand together for women's participation on issues of national, regional, continental and international importance. And through dialogues, they seek to establish a common agenda for the development of women and to ensure that women's views are taken into consideration whenever decisions are taken on all issues that impact on our lives. The Sawood Forum was initiated to provide a platform for ongoing dialogue. Hello, Martha. It's so lovely to have you here. Welcome to the show. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks so much. Now, Martha, today we are here to discuss how we can celebrate womanhood and motherhood of mothers of kids with disabilities. Now, you are the COO of the South African Women in Dialogue. Can you tell us a bit more about your organization? I think it's one of the most wonderful organizations I know about. It was started by people like Mrs. Zanelle Mbeki and Dr. Brigelia Bam in 2003 to get women, the most diverse group of women together to decide what the agenda for women should be in the country. And it's come to a point where women have said what we want to do is work for the whole of society and especially for families. And so there's a very strong focus on the family because women said they were still too poor and we went to look at poverty eradication models in Chile and Tunisia and realized that the family is the basis of all development. And so we have a very strong focus on the family as the unit of, of development. So I'm, I feel very privileged. I've been there for 17 years, long time. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, speaking about motherhood particularly, now being a mother is, I think they, as they say, one of the hardest jobs in the world. I don't know, I don't have a kid yet, but I can only imagine <laughs> that it is one of the hardest jobs. But particularly if you are a mother of a child with a disability, you know, so much of these mothers' time goes into the nurturing and the caregiving for their child, often, you know, at the at the behest of themselves. So what do we need to do in order to honour not only the motherhood, but also the womanhood in mothers with children with disabilities? I think that's one of the most difficult questions because I... I... Firstly, I wanted to say that I, my mind was opened when somebody with a disability said to me, but you are all only temporarily abled. And I think we forget wow. that. I think that the most important thing is that there's a lot of burdens that comes with bringing up children, especially when fathers become absent because of the difficulties of dealing with children with disabilities. And I, if you look at the statistics in South Africa, the 2011 census showed that 69% of all children under five were growing up in homes where biological fathers were absent. So it's a staggering number. It is staggering. And for the mother that's at home watching this program right now, who has lost herself in the caregiving of her child, what steps can you say that she can take in order to revive her womanhood? Very important question because those are the people who spend all their time to making sure that we live in a society where the most vulnerable are, are taken care of, even at, at the loss of, of everything they need for themselves. 
I would, I truly believe that what we need is governance for the growth of souls and that people who sacrifice themselves for others, who bring out the selfless love in themselves, are already far ahead of the rest of us. And so I think just take control of your enormous spiritual strength, which comes from taking care. And people with caregiving responsibilities are better able to solve the problems of the whole world than other people who are more self-centered and take care only of their own needs. So I would just say work hard on having relationships with caring people with emotional maturity. Learn to make better decisions about the partners we choose so that they would be able to interact with us in caring long-term relationships. Absolutely, that's so important because then in doing so you have a firm and a solid uh, support structure around you. You know, and I would also think that for the caregivers, it's to understand that, you know, if, if you take care of yourself first, you have more to give uh, to your to your child and to other people that's around you as well from that from that place of, you know, filling yourself up spiritually, as you said, and having the support that you need to go forth. Martha, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Thank you so much for coming down and for imparting some of your insights with us. And we hope that more South African women will join in the dialogue. Thank you very much. Nadat sy ingesê was om haar kind in een inlichting te plaas, het Shona McDonald een revolusie begin vir een rolstoelontwerp om kinders met moote gestremdhede te help. Dit het geleid tot die aanstaan van Shona Koop. Kom ons vind dit meer. Shona McDonald has been a leader of the social enterprise movement in South Africa. Reinventing herself and her business continuously to expand its impact and footprint and to hand power back to the thousands of mothers of children with disabilities who, like her, depend on their womanhood to not only cope, but to make them change agents in their local communities. I suppose my whole journey in Shonequip started with the birth of my middle daughter, who was born with severe CP and we were told to put her in her home and have another baby. And it made me really angry that somebody could just judge a child at a few months old as to their future. So I started on a journey really of trying to understand what I could do to help her live her best life. And that started with alternate communication and moved on then to equipment and then ultimately, obviously, school and um, being included in everything we did in my whole family life and in our community. Without having the knowledge to address it, we're never going to change the situation. When we as a parent sit with a child with a disability and don't even realize that therapy would be a good solution, then it doesn't make sense to prioritize it in our finances to get to the hospital for rehab. But the minute a parent knows rehab's important and understands that a wheelchair cannot just be the neighbor's granny's chair, it has to be a chair fitted for that specific child so that that child's function can improve. When the parent knows that, then they can make an informed choice to go and lobby at the government hospital for the chair that they deserve and need for their child. If you think just in South Africa alone, there's over 8 million families of children with, or people with disabilities. If there's a united voice of 8 million people who now understand what disability is and what their rights should be, there's going to be a demand for delivery on those rights. Every single mom in that group is unable to work because they are looking after their children and they don't have an alternative. So it already means that the entire family unit is a disadvantage because there's less income coming into that family. Every child is valued. Every child should have a future, no matter what that future is. And we as parents need to invest in that future and hold each child equally precious in our family journey. 
na die advertentie breek, vind ons meer uit oor die Parents Champion Trust. Ouwe van kinders met gestreemd jere word hier bijgestaan met belangrijke informatie, ondersteuningsgroepe met ander ouwers en verdere genoerige halbronne. Dit is een waardevolle bijdrage wat die leven vir baie gesinne op een sinvolle manier verbeter. Ons is nou weer terug. Welkom terug hier by Activated. Dit vaag soveel meer om een kind met een gestreemdheid groot te maak en daar is baie min ondersteuning van die reageering en die samenleving. Dit is hier die feit wat die Parents Champion Trust wat in 2020 dier die show en equip social enterprise bekendgestel is so waardevol maak. In ons wekelikse bulletin vind ons meer uit oor hulle. Kom ons gaan loer in. E-Parent Champion Trust, Kula Po Abazal, Babandwana Aba Kuba Zekleyo, Bati Bana Kona, Bati Tenge Nga Gizabo, Aba Shanga Beza Nanaso, Apa Ibumini, Ukwazi, Ukungwetana, Abazal, Babandwana Aba Kuba Zekleyo. If you want to be part of the group, we have WhatsApp group, then if I have somebody who have a disabled child, then I take the number and then we contact the, the, the group, then we WhatsApp every, everybody, then we add somebody in the group. Wanneer ouwers by mekaar staan, het dit een baie sterke inpak in een gemeenskap. Vooral ouwers van kinders met gestreemd jyde. Hulle skep een ondersteuningstelsel wat nodig is om die beste in beide die ouwer en die kind na voor te bring. En nou reis ons tot by Orange Farm in Gauteng om te sien hoe een gemeenskap solidariteit toon met die lede van die Sindinga Utando ouwersgroep die van hulle huise pers te verf. Die doel van hier die initiatief is om hulle kinders met gestreemd jyde sigbaar te maak en om een gevoel van eenheid tussen ouders van kinders met gestreemd jyde en die rest van die gemeenskap te skep. The color paper is quite interesting, you know, how it came about. One of our staff members who has a child with disability. I was celebrating a birthday for the child with a disability. So now the theme was purple. Then thereafter, the decision was made that let's use color purple to paint, you know, the houses where there is a child with a disability. And uh, that color purple signified disability. If a parent, any member of the community sees that there is a, a member of community with a, ch a child with a disability, they will know where to refer. They can walk in there and they get information around how a child with a disability can be assisted, what rights do they have and stuff. So that's how color people came by, out of a birthday for a child with disability. Families were not courageous enough to show their disabled child to the community. And therefore, they always kept their child, uh, children with disability at home. They didn't want the kids to venture out in the community, in the public and stuff like that. We then saw that, no, actually, let's educate parents to know that even those children with disability have got rights. And it is a group like City Mutando where these rights are shared. The empowerment has been that they don't feel ashamed to come out and say their story. They see that they are also human beings, their kids are human beings, so therefore they can come in the public and share as much as they can. Today we celebrate the womanhood of all our guests and all the mothers out there who show such creativity, courage and tenacity 
in the way that they care for their children despite the many obstacles they face. Angelique Duplessis describes herself as a professional juggler of day-to-day -day life, seasoned graphic designer and aspiring painter. She is the mother of three children, two of which have special needs. She started painting two years ago after going through a deep depression. Art was her way to reconnect with something that she has always loved and it was good for her soul. Her kids are all very creative and love painting with mom. It's like their own secret language. Geniet jylle dag. Tot volgende week. Selfde tyd. Slechts op SABC2. You belong. Before we had a child with Down syndrome, you have a lot of ideals and dreams for your life about how you think things would be. Amy has really just almost put our life on a pause and had us reevaluate things. We started just embracing every day and enjoying little moments in life and enjoying little pleasures in life and enjoying our kids for the quirkiness that they have. It was important for me that she got along with her siblings and they got to love her for who she is and we got to understand her as a child with different abilities. Um, different um, gifts and talents and just celebrate her for who she is. Wow, this is a cool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. I would just encourage everybody to really take time to get to know somebody that's not like you. Um, we have learned a lot from our child and from a lot of people with different abilities. They have so much to give and we mustn't uh, look down on them. They have gifting that uh, it will blow your mind if you actually just take the time and spend some time with them. You'll, be, you'll really be blessed for it. Mm -hmm.